Well, hello there. This is Vichal Chesnoop, learning and having fun with chess. A relatively quick video today. I've decided to delay my full review of the Sense Robot Chess. And part of the reason is that I think it is missing some functionality in terms of connecting to uh, online platforms. For instance, for instance, with chess.com and even with Lead Chess in terms of the range of features which are available. I have spoken to the Sense Robot team and they're actually working with uh, the developer of Chess Connect. That's Jörn Gehring, potentially trying to integrate the functionality of his software so they can connect to chess.com, Lead Chess, and potentially a range of other online platforms as well. Now that will potentially really change how I might review the Sense Robot Chess. That's in, uh, that's uh, that's basically being actioned right away. So I thought it wouldn't be fair to review the device where it is. Now, hardware wise, it's really cool. Uh, at the moment, you can play uh, rapid games on Lead Chess with the robot. I'm gonna show you a game that I played on Lee Chess, a 15 plus 10 game of Rapid, just showing how the review features work. Uh, so reviewing your own game on the bot and also demonstrating this game, which was a Vienna game, the Greek gift sacrifice. Now on the app, Basically, you go to Planet Alliance. They've got some funny labels on the app. So it's online chess. This is a game that I played against a random opponent on Lee Chess. Uh, and what you do, oops, I might have to just turn the device on. There we go. Here, this is the game. Uh, you, can, you can go all the way through. I <laughs> won this game. And then uh, you can go AI replay, and it pushes the game onto Please the bot. Select the review side for the game. The review side, I haven't played white, so I'm going to review as if I were white. There we go. Invitation loaded. Setting up the pieces. Please wait a moment. Pushes the game the pieces onto the bot. Are set up. You okay. can use the direction keys on the chessboard to review the game. There Click we the go. Click the button to start the classic game. All right. And you can play, you know, position against, um, against the AI on the device. But here I'm actually just going to show the game because it's a pretty cool game. And maybe you'll learn a little bit about uh, some positions in Vienna and also sensitize yourself to the Greek gift sacrifice as well. Oh, let's go. All right. So the Vienna game, of course, starts with E4, E5, and Knight C3. Oh, let's see this on the board. B4. E4. And you know, really enjoy seeing the robot move the pieces. E5. Now I can turn down the volume of the bot, but I might just keep its speech on. And Knight C3. Knight C3. And here we have the Vienna game. Now against the Vienna game, the most common responses by black will be one of the knights. So either the king's knight to knight f6 or maybe the queen's knight to knight c, uh, c6. And in this game, black played knight c6. knight c6 and this is known as the Max Langer defense. Against the Max Langer defense, one of the, uh, there's a number of ways you can play. Bishop out is very common. So bishop to c4, the idea is you place pressure on the f7 pawn, but I love playing Vienna Gambit, the Max Langer Vienna Gambit with f4. f4. And one of the things about the Vienna Gambit and, and why it's powerful is that for opponents not used to it, they may very well play the other knight. So against e4, e5 games, generally in most positions, a two knights approach is perfectly good for black. It's usually one of the best moves except against the Vienna Gambit. It's actually a mistake. So let's see what happens. My opponent does play the other knight and we can now see a massive problem because that tension between the F and the E pawn, they should have taken. If they don't take, we take. And let's see e how the position now transforms. So, their e-pawn is off the board. 
I've captured the pawn and now my uh, F pawn, which is now uh, on E5, places pressure against that king's knight. Notice also I've got a semi-open F file. And often the semi-open F file after kingside castling, the knight controls the F file. That's one of the tactical ideas in the Vienna. Now, attacking the knight. The knight cannot move uh, to uh, these two squares here because it's defended by my queen's knight. If I want to stay on the board to these two squares, it's defended by my queen. Can't do that either. So it looks like it might have to undevelop. Now, obviously, they don't want to do that. Logical thing is the knight captures. The queen's knight takes. 95. That is their best move, but it's already quite problematic for black. So we now chase black's knights force their knights to move over and over again, and in doing so, we win development. Yep, they've moved their knight, but look at this, a d4, d4. our d-pawn moves forward, our pawns take the center, a good tactical idea, attacking the knight, what are they going to do? Knight can either go to g6 or go back to c6, either Nine position six. is about equally good or equally bad for black. They move in this position. In both uh, situations, we now push e5. our e uh, pawn forward. Once again, a pawn on e5. And once again, we've got this attack on black's king's knight. Just like before, the king's knight can't go to one of the squares on the board because uh, our knight defends these two squares our queen defends, whoops, our queen defends these two squares. Looks like they have to undevelop, and undeveloping the knight is in fact their best Nigeria. move. And as you can see, we forced the knights to move multiple times, one knight back to its starting square like it did nothing. We control the center with our pawns. Very, very good opening. Now in this position, we do have to watch their queen moving to h4 with check. Now, the best way to do it against that is we develop our other knight and we defend that square. So knight f3, a very simple, very rational, logical move. In this position, what does black do? Well, very commonly, uh, they e will five. develop uh, one of their pieces. Here, they play the best move, which is immediate d5 pushing their pawn into the center, trying to cement the center. That's their best move. Now here, bishop b5. relatively logical move for us. Bishop to the b5, pinning their queen's knight to their king. So very logical move. What are they going to do? Uh, they play- Bishop b4. Yeah, fairly logical move for them, or logical appearing move for them. Bishop to b4, sort of symmetrical thing, pinning my knight. One of the things uh, to know against the Vienna game and the Vienna Gambit is that Black's bishop to b4 move often doesn't really work. It looks like a pin, but let's say they trade their bishop for the knight, which is probably their best move after uh, after captures, and then we have uh, the b pawn capture. Yes, we have doubled c pawns, but these but you know we've got an absolutely massive center of pawns. It's actually completely fine for us, and they lose more development. Now in this position, I do something very simple, which Can't is work. just to castle. Get the king out of the center, castling king side makes sense for us. It's one of the reasons why the trade of the bishop for the knight on the queen side doesn't really work for black. We were going to castle king side anyway. And as mentioned earlier, notice our rook now controls the semi open f file. That's what we want. 97. Now, they develop their other knight looking potentially to castle king side themselves. That's perfectly good for us, but we've got, we're really high on development now. Now, in this position in the game, I wasn't actually entirely sure what was the best move. Um, knight to g5, so starting the attack is immediately good. Uh, I wasn't so committed in the game, so I decided to actually play a, a three. three, a little bit inaccurate, giving their bishop a bit of a kick. 
Uh, and here the best response probably is to trade the bishop for the knight. Um, however, they wanted to play a little bit more aggressively and so they played a six, a six counter-attacking my bishop. And this is actually a blunder. Now, I didn't quite see this because I saw some other tactic in the game. The reason that is a blunder is that it blunders their dark square bishop. Because once I capture their bishop, this pawn, the, their a6 pawn, is pinned by my rook to their rook. So actually they can't even capture my bishop without losing another piece. So that is the most accurate move. But here I was already thinking I potentially have a Greek gift sacrifice or Greek gift sacrifice type tactic, which is to pull the bishop back to d3, looking at their h7 pawn. And here the queen and the rook are already in place. Uh, and let's see what happens. I pull my bishop, bishop back. So Stockfish says this is relatively inaccurate. I should have just taken their bishop, I won a piece, but rather than winning pieces, I'm aiming potentially for a mate, for a kill. So here they're going to move five. their bishop out of the way. Notice that that bishop is pretty much, no, I'm not worried about this, they're just losing a turn because they can't go back here or here because my pawns control the dark squares. You know, it's, it's actually not, it's basically not really doing anything. And here I decide, knight g5. let's move knight g5. So technically, I don't actually have a Greek gift sacrifice here. I don't even need to sacrifice anything. Here, notice the knight. Attack on h7. Two attackers. Also, knight attacks f7. Two attackers, knight and rook. I have a massive attack on black's king side. What are they going to do? They do something I Castling. expected them to do, which they're going to castle. Uh, looks like it's safer for the king. This is another blunder. And in fact, there's a force line of checkmate on the board. And I sort of thought that this potentially could happen, which was why I actually brought my bishop back to uh, d3 immediately. Can you see the follow-up? So this would normally potentially be a Greek gift sacrifice if the knight was still on f3, but the knight's already forward, so it's not even a sacrifice. It is bishop, bishop captures the, uh, their h7 pawn with check, it's forcing, king has only one move, uh, their king pretty much has to go to h8, only legal move. So let's see what happens. Yep, king moves, I'm winning tempo. King h8. Okay, king h8. King moves, what's the next move? You can probably see it. Queen now to the h file. Queen h5. King h5. Queen h5. It's looking really, really not good. And of course, moving the bishop uh, is a discovered check. G6. So they it really doesn't matter. It's a false sign of mate. Attacking the queen makes sense. Very simple. We move the bishop captures the pawn. Bishop g6. So bishop g6 and it's discovered check. King has one of two possible moves. All right. Queen check. King can either go to, uh, to a g8 or they can go to g7. It doesn't really matter. They decide to king play g7. king g7 and on this move, after they made the move, they actually resigned before I could deliver the killer blow, which is queen to h7 mate. Notice there is no escape square on f6 because it's defended by that forward e5 pawn. So hope you enjoyed this game. This was the first game I played on the Sense Robot Chess against a random opponent on a Lee Chess. You can review games like this, so your own games. There's also built-in uh, 100 some Masters games as well. It's uh, 
yeah, it's not a bad way of doing it. I'm really looking forward potentially to Chess Connect's integration with the uh, Sense Robot Chess. When that is done, uh, that's when I will do a formal review of the bot. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Thank you.